for a past project, meditation upon preparation for the reappearance of the Christ. This meditation is meditation where we are asking you to have your notebooks and pen available. Uh, this is meditation which is done by Master DK, and he is asking to do this on Thursdays as it is now. So we know that this is the day which is related to planet Jupiter, the second ray planet. Write down the ages in many world cycles and in many countries, and today in all. Great points of tension have occurred, which have been characterized by a hopeful sense of expectancy. Someone is expected and his coming is anticipated. Always in the past, it has been the religious teachers of the period who have fostered and proclaimed this expectancy. And the time has always been one of chaos and difficulty of a climaxing point at the close of a civilization or culture. And when the resources of the old religions have seemed inadequate, inadequate to meet men's difficulties or to solve their problems. The coming of the avatar, the advent of a coming one, and in terms of today, the reappearance of the Christ are the keynotes of the prevalent expectancy. When the times are ripe, the invocation of the masses is strident enough, and the faith of those who know is keen enough, then always he has come, and today will be no exception to this ancient rule or to this universal law. For decades, the reappearance of the Christ, the avatar, has been anticipated by the faithful. In both, not only by the Christian faithful, but by those who look for Maitreya, or for the Bodhisattva, as well as those who expect the Imam Mahdi. Let us, let us align with this expectancy all around the planet. And especially, certainly because of this crisis. The fear which is also in the heart of humanity. Many are turning within and desperately waits for him. But then there are also forces which are so much challenging, the understanding that there would be anything behind the veil. And that's why we have gathered from all directions at this same time to do our part, to help humanity. and to have a contact with the Masters. It is said when the disciple is admitted to ashram, he has to centralize all his forces upon the physical plane. When a disciple does this, and when he is one-pointed in his activity, there is much that he can do. We can reflect this. When to these tendencies of inflow and or concentration there is added a trained and illumined mind, then the disciple becomes a focal point of spiritual attraction. He can reach many, yet ever remain polarized at his own center. His life then has an ordered rhythm and there is steadfast 
adherence to a plan which is carried through all, at all costs. He takes also his rightful position as a representative, representative of an ashram. So align your own lineage, those who have walked before you and those who are walking behind you. And realize it is crucial what you do at this time. Deepen says, forget not that the masters choose their disciple. Not only from karmic relation, if such a relation exists, but only because the disciple demands light. And that is what we do. We demand that light. And has a powerful aspiration towards spiritual things but because the disciple is equipped to render some definite service which fits into the ashramic intention of the moment. And we should be thinking about that every day during this last month of the forerunner, that we could really respond to the need, which is also descending from above. So we go deep within to the work. And now also you may reflect the last week's plan, what you had. So review the planned activities from the last week in the light of your last week's expressed intention and how successful you had been. And now the meditation itself states one. Now when we have achieved a positive and intended personality quietness, formulate clearly to yourself and in your own words the answers to the following questions. And one, as a member of the new group of world servers, what is your specific and fixed intention at this moment of dedicated contact with your soul? Two, is your concentrated and expressed personality purpose in line with the hierarchical intention as far as you are permitted to know it? Three, have you in your own personal daily life earned the right because of definite effort and not so much because of success to stand with those servers who are now undertaking 
the work or preparation. This is the one time in the meditation where you think of yourself. And this is because it is a method of personality focused in attention and aligns your personality upon the mental plane. Stage two. Having now answered these three questions in the light of the soul, let us now say with emphasis. Forgetting the things which lie behind, I will strive towards my higher spiritual possibilities. I dedicate myself anew to the service of the coming one and will do all I can to prepare men's minds and hearts for that event. I have no other life intention. Stage three, let us now visualize the world situation as best we can. And in terms of our major world interest and with what knowledge or world affairs we may possess. See the mass of men everywhere glowing with a dim light. And what is the quality of that light? And then here and there points of brighter light where members of the new group of world servers and men of spiritual intention and of loving hearts are working for their fellow men. What is the quality of that light? And now visualize through the creative imagination, the vivid light of the hierarchy. What is the quality of that light? See it streaming towards humanity and slowly merging with the light. Which is already in humanity. Let us say the first stanza of the great invocation.
from the point of light within the mind of God. Let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. Now ponder upon the reappearance of the Christ. Realize that no matter by what name he may be called in the many world religions, he is still the same great identity. Reflect and speculate upon the possible results of his appearance. Let us ponder these three things, what has to be in place before he can come. When a measure of peace has been restored. When the principle of sharing is at least in process of controlling economic affairs. And when churches and polit political groups have begun to clean house. Then he can and will come. Let us say second stanza. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. Endeavor to concentrate your fixed intention to serve and to spread love in your surroundings.
let us realize that in so far as we can do these things, we are attempting to plant our personal will with the divine will. And let us say now the third stanza. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. Practical plans. Let us now consider practically what we can do in the coming week to further the preparations for the coming of the Christ. Let us remember that we are part of a group of working forerunners who are called at this time to act and to do our part in the plan. In the presence of the angel, let us make a definite plan for the coming week and think about how we will help in the preparations. This is our moment to rehearse our cooperation with the hierarchy and how to listen what needs to be done. And then let us write the plan down.
Let us now respond to the vibrations of the living Christ. Let us learn to really recognize his vibrations and living presence. Let us commit ourselves in his name. We have gathered in your name. Lord Maitreya, be with us. And we welcome his presence. Let us send our blessings to all of those crises, places, and points in the world. And visualize the Christ in the heart of those places. Palestine, Israel. and Russia and Ukraine. And other places. And let us not forget also our little brothers and sisters in animal kingdom. And let us sound the sacred word Om three times, dedicating our threefold personality to the work of preparation. Let us send our loving thoughts and blessings to our beautiful group. Thank you so much for your dedicated work and your faithful presence. So now again, lots of love to everybody. And thank you so much. We meet again tomorrow at the same time, 6 p.m. GMT.